Hello, hello, hello. This is Elect Lady Vanessa Dalton, and welcome to another True Tuesday. Now, Minister Elect Eric Edwards is coming back again, so grab somebody in your house, go get on your computer, your laptop, whatever you use to watch us. Don't forget your notebook, and most of all, don't forget your Bible, and let's get into the Word. Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I'm glad to be back here with you again for True Tuesday. Uh, before we get started, I want to say a quick word of prayer. So, Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this opportunity to stand before you again, before your people, Lord, and just to give a message that hopefully will be beneficial to them, that will help edify them, and to move them along the road to maturity in you, Lord. And we just thank you for this opportunity. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, this is going to be part two of what I started last week. Uh, Talking about the stages of Christian life. My text is going to be from Hebrews 5, 11, and 13, which says, About this we have much to say, and it's hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the basic principles of the oracles of God. You need milk, not solid food, for everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness since he is a child. Now the writer of Hebrews had just finished teaching on Jesus as our high priest, and he's talking about how difficult it was to get the people there that he was, he was trying to teach to understand. They had become carnal. They were at that age in a place in their, in their walk where they thought they knew something, but they didn't quite know what they thought they knew. Uh, the people were at a point where they should have been ready to learn more about God, to grow in knowledge, but they had kind of gotten stuck in a rut. They still needed to be taught the basics. And again, going back to what we were talking about last time, this is much like you see children and people as they mature in the natural world. So what we're going to be talking about is that stage of where the, the believer is not fully mature, but they're in a maturing phase. Kind of like that teenager, young adult type in the natural world. So maturing believers are like those teenagers, those young adults who have some knowledge and they're beginning to seek and try and get some more independence. Now, in the natural realm, parents, we're willing to give some 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 measure of independence and responsibility, but we still know that these people need, our, our children, 18, 19, 20, 21, they still need some supervision. So we want to give them that, give them some, some structure. The maturing Christian will be, like, will be like that too, you know, and you know how teenagers can be, young adults can be. They are the ones that prove that old adage to be true, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. And a time when they should be growing in knowledge and sanctification, maturing Christian, sometimes they'll grab on to things in incomplete knowledge. And then they think they found all the answers. They know everything about the faith. And they go through a season where they don't grow, where they where they fallen into carnality. They've started to act like the world a little bit again. And it's just like with teenagers. Teenagers, young adults, they think they know. They think that the knowledge that they have, they think is all that, that that's all there is. And sometimes they don't want to listen to the more mature. For the maturing Christians, they're going to make some mistakes. Some of them are going to be headstrong and they're going to challenge authority in the church. And they'll want to show off their spiritual independence. They, okay, I'm saved. I know a little something. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to do, do big things. And that's all part of the maturing process. But in the maturing process, they're going to have to learn some really hard lessons sometimes. And you don't want that to happen, but just like with natural children, sometimes they have to make mistakes on their own to learn from mistakes. But as the mature, as the adult, as a mature person, you have to be there when they do fall to help them back up, to pick them back up. They, they're going to need care. They don't need as much care as babies. But sometimes the, the maturing Christian will get to a point where they feel like they're rejected by the church. They, that other believers just don't understand them, don't get them. And... Or they just feel like they don't have a solid place within the church. They, they're still trying to find their way, trying to fit in. And just like with teenagers, when they're trying to fit in, sometimes you'll find the wrong group to fit in with. And you can go off the rails a little bit. But just like in a natural family, in the church family, the mature have to be there for those people to kind of go off the rails. The young ones that go off the rails, you got to be there to kind of bring them back, to give them some guidance, to, give, to, to disciple them. You don't just, okay, you messed up and throw them away. Our parents didn't throw us away when we messed up. And all of us, when we were teenagers, we messed up. 
we did some stuff that we shouldn't have done, went some places we shouldn't have been. If our parents had thrown us away and just given up on us when we made mistakes, where would we be? Same thing with the, with the church family. The mature Christians are going to have to be there to nurture and care for those, for those maturing Christians. You've got to give them some good instruction. And again, you have, to, you have to disciple them. You have to be there, be available to them, giving them knowledge, giving them instruction, showing them the right way. And they should be able to look at the mature Christian and understand what the right way is. They should be able to walk your track and be on the right path. So we can't just give up on them when they make a mistake. And what we also have to understand, though, is, is you young, maturing Christians, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to come to the, to the realization that you don't have all answers. You don't know everything. The knowledge that you have is better than no knowledge. It's better than just being fed the milk. But you don't know it all yet. you got a long way to go in this. You can have people that's been in this thing, been mature for a long time, and they're still learning. They're still having things open to them. You don't know it all when you've been a Christian for four years. You don't know it all when you heard that preacher preach that one thing that you really liked and you decided to make a doctrine of it. you got to listen to those, maturing, those mature Christians. They are trying to help you. When they're trying to help you, when they're trying to disciple you, when they're trying to give you some direction, listen. Listen. Take it. Understand that they love you. They're trying to do the best for you. And I know it's hard to humble yourself sometimes and admit that you don't have all the answers, but that's what you're going to have to do. And that's a part of the maturing process. With our children, we will give them a little bit more rope, a little bit more room, a little bit more leeway when they realize that they made a mistake and they can say, you know what, I made a mistake, this is where I made the mistake, and that's something I've learned from. In the church, we need to let those maturing Christians have that same, that same space. Let them see what they did wrong, understand why it was wrong, and grow from it. And the mature Christian has to be there to help those younger Christians along. So I'm going to wrap it up there for tonight. Next week we'll be talking about the maturing Christians because in everything else we talked about them, now we're going to be talking about what's expected of them the next time. So just remember as the Christians mature and grow, be there for them. Understand that they're going to make mistakes. They're going to have slips and falls. But love them through it and help them up off the ground instead of just watching them fall. So I thank you for your time tonight. Uh, again, we are here at True Work Fellowship located at 310 West Meadow Road in Eden, North Carolina. Our regular service times on Sunday are 9 o'clock for Sunday school, 10 o'clock for our, for our morning service. If you're in the area, feel free to come by and see us. If you're unchurched, we would love to have you here. So just remember us, and now I'm going to take us out in a quick word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are thankful for this opportunity to have spoken to those people that are maturing Christians to let them understand that even though they may make mistakes, they are still loved that the church still loves them and has a place for them and wants to see them grow. Lord, just soften their hearts, loosen their necks so that they can be led and, and guided. And Lord, those mature Christians, just give them the patience and the wisdom to lead the young. And Lord, we just thank you for all you've done. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.